one out the back. <laughs> answer that. I, I taught uh, organic farming or organic agriculture for um, six years at TAFE and um, it's not not all re uh, organic farming is regenerative um, as we heard from Glenn earlier on but um, but it's a step in the right direction in many ways and, and there are you know we, we're putting names on things and putting people in organic boxes and regenerative boxes and conventional boxes and it's probably a bit unfortunate because everyone takes what they want out of each of those and does their own thing. And, um, and that's really what all of us should do because some of the, the advantages in organics are fantastic. Um, I personally think it's a great thing not to have to ingest chemicals. Um, so not having toxic chemicals in our food is a great outcome. Uh, but uh, maybe we can take on board some of the other things out of regenerative farming, biological farming, whatever you'd like to call it. Um, and you can make up your own name for what you, what you are and uh, go on your way because you know, each of us have, has things that we'd like to do. We put emphasis on different stuff and uh, uh, you know, to get the outcome we want. So that's really where it's at because each of us wants a certain outcome and uh, that's what we're trying to achieve. I, th I think the attractiveness of regenerative ag is it's not defined. It's not got a box yet. It means that it's part of all these other things. It hasn't been defined and I think that's a really crucial part because all these new names come up and once they get boxed, they become itemised and then, no, no, you can't do that. You're, you're organic or you, you, you are biodynamics or whatever. It, it, the, the attractiveness of this word or this wording is that it isn't defined yet. It will end up with a definition, and then they'll start to box people in a, in a thing. Ah, oh, you know, we know what you do. So, I think that's the attractive part of it at the moment. It's a new word that's not defined. It's just been classified as emo. Can I just say also, um, I sat down one evening with a with a couple of friends at a land care conference, and I said, okay, what is it? Because if I'm going to be trying to teach students and pushing in this, you know, in this direction, what is it going to look like? And we came up with this big wagon wheel of with many spokes, and we decided that there were lots of things that could be could could fit into the Regen Ag wheel, if you like. And we also felt that what was important is that you didn't have to, like, as long as you like, just went with what resonated with you. Because there's, you know, a lot of people looking for alternatives. I mean, you look at what's out there, as long as you go with what you are interested in, it might be water, it might be humus, it might be soil chemistry, it doesn't matter where you start, just go with what resonates with you on your land and just, just get on the wheel, just get on it somewhere. <laughs> and, and then make connections with people and practitioners and learn what you can about that that, that, that drew you into it, first of all. And that's, I guess, I don't want to define it either. I think it's something that you can choose, it's like pick your own adventure, you know, like look at your situation and go with what feels right for you. Sarah Shmoo did a question on the Regen Ag Facebook page and asked this exact question. And? And <laughs> there, was, there was some really good responses. I, I, had, I had a talk from Darren Doherty once who said that oh, yeah. um, sustainable farming, the idea that you're, you're not losing, you're not losing things out of your system, maybe that you're sustaining them. He said, that's just not worth it because you, you don't call your marriage sustainable. You want your marriage to be rich and re, like regenerating so you're um, you know, like no, I wasn't <laughs> you get more out Good analogy. <laughs> but it's true, right? You want your marriage to be more than just the same. You want to put more in. So so with is the idea that you're putting 
you're, what you put into the landscape, you get more out of it at the end because you're putting back into it. So you're not just like taking from it. And you're not just breaking even, you're increasing the resilience and its capacity to keep producing into the future. Would that be a good? And, yeah. and I think yeah. regenerative agriculture, like a lot of it focuses on, on the tools of regenerative agriculture, whether it's rotational grazing or soil balancing and things like that. And there's hundreds of different things that apply in different systems, but they're key principles like working towards regenerating and making resilience of not just the landscape, but the communities and the people mm. and the culture mm. around agriculture. Mm. So, so there's a set of, it's not a definitions, but there's probably a set of principles of which there are <coughs> hundreds of tools that we can apply depending on our situation, our context, our environments, our soils, and, and, and what we want to get out of and how we want to interact with our communities. Yeah. 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 Oh, um, can I just say, I love Jason's comment that maybe, hopefully it won't be fully defined, but at the moment it isn't very well defined and it's an incredibly exciting space to be in because people are able to get this energy and these ideas and discussion going. When it gets defined, we'll change it. Yeah, yeah. Regenerative. 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 <laughs> Any more questions? I just hey, congratulations on what you're doing. Um, you're at the grassroots, and I think there was a comment uh, in the first documentary where the guys said that you know the first conference they went to there was ten people at it, and the average age was 65. Uh, it's great to see you getting in there um, at a school like Hamlet High and making a real difference and making a change. And I think that's where it starts. <laughs> I feel it really strongly. It's very important that um, what's in the curriculum, the curriculum really hasn't changed in many decades. Um, and I Even at university. Yeah, and it has not sat well with me. I mean, I have to teach chemicals and I have to do, you know, teach all these things according to the curriculum. And, um, and I, just, I, I still have to do it in my senior classes, but I've just stopped in my yeah. junior classes. And, 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 and ag is, is a wonderful subject in that way because it's very generalised. <coughs> And so um, I see an opportunity there to, and it's the young kids that, that are really into this. And I, um, you know, we look at these farmers who are really energised and you talk to kids and you get them doing things. And um, um, we have a Hugel garden that we put in when I first started. So, you know, it's an old German method of, of um, gardening with, with timber in the soil. And we grew food in it this year for our Viking feast and the broccolis were just enormous and they, they hadn't had any insect attack and they were incredible. They were so nutritious and delicious. And that's when kids get it, like they get it. They see it and they just go, wow, like that's amazing that you can grow broccoli that large. And yeah, yeah that's, that's what it's about, so. Um, and, and Jason also touched on it and I was like that. I, I love learning, you know, and yeah. the, it's fun to learn and that's a great way to do it. Yeah, and you can put your hand in the soil. Like, you yeah. know, kids get that, they, you know, we've got, really hard clay soils and all of a sudden you can stick your hand right into it. So it's that tangible thing that you can smell. And the smell, yeah. Yeah, we spend a lot of time smelling, tasting, no, we don't taste it. But you can. Yeah, you can eat veggies, yeah, that's right. Um, yes? Um, for Rebecca, yes. um, do your, your project that's going to hopefully impact on kids in the city. I mean, the, the city-country divide is getting bigger and bigger, yeah. as everybody realises, and I just think I'd really encourage you to really go down that track as well as you can. I mean, every time we go to the city, we have, we're almost like lecturers. Yeah. <laughs> the people I over the dinner table about what we're doing, and, um, and some get it and some don't want to know. Um, well, they see it on the Today Show, and they realise that there's a drought on. You know, and these are people, my best friend, her mother lives in the city and she rang her last weekend and said, you're in drought, I saw it on the Today Show. You know, like even people with direct links to the country aren't aware of what's going on. So, yeah, something does happen. <laughs> so yeah, I, I've always seen that as really important and I think that um, the city people are open to this and, you know, when they understand that, they're really interested in their food and where it comes from and, you know, it's a great story, so. And what yeah. about the schools though? I mean, we. We did a few things with our local school to sort of pick up the results when we were there, but we had a, it was, the antipathy was with the principal who didn't want us there, who just said, well, you won't be here in 20 years' time, it'll still go back to the Aborigines and the Indians. But, oh, good. Um, <laughs> and, and, he, and he cut out our school program, so I just found, you know, uh, and I found that even today, that it's not.
I suppose it's more a comment, and Dave and I have had this discussion many times. But there is a big, big wall out there, and the regenerative agricultural organic momentum is all tapping away. And due to commercialisation, we're probably all doing it individually. And I wonder if we're ever going to climb up the, the brick wall with the, the chemical synthetic over the top. Well, I suppose the, the fantastic thing and the students actually learn something in six weeks that they couldn't learn in three years. <laughs> Although it's also <laughs> extremely <laughs> sad that the curriculum hasn't changed for 50 years and that, that someone who comes out as an agronomist 50 years ago is probably as smart as an agronomist who comes out mm -hmm. now. <laughs> you know, and in fairness to, to those students, I think that to me is the most scariest thing. What was your experience like? Because I've come through UNE, done some of my uni, and um, I didn't do ag extension, but I'm, I'd love to hear what how it was re responded to within the community at UNE. And um, so unfortunately, really the only units that are like the only course that do ag ex so are yeah. ag science and rural science. So there's a lot of people that go into agronomy jobs and go agribusiness all so agriculture like they've never had this experience. And all this is really required is just a trial by fire to you know, go out in the community and actually learn a bit. Like, have, jump on one of these boards, see what actually happens in the real world. And it gets you, it's a good chance to actually take what you've learned in the classroom and apply it now and just think about it. So personally, I've really enjoyed it. Um, I know different people have different experiences with it, just with their groups and so and so, but I think every every course, this is my personal opinion, not anyone else. Yeah, so I think every unit, every course, they should do something like this, where they have the opportunity to go out and actually meet the people that they're going to be working for, that they're going to be consulting in the future, and find out what's actually happening in their lives. Yeah. I think there's, there is some, like, um, post from guys up at um, Fair Agronomy up in uh, Warwick the other day, they had Southern Cross University students out on the property. I think this is an opportunity to just invite the uni students and the, and the lecturers to come out to properties if, and if we have an open invitation to them then that allows them to, to see what's happening in the local environment. And with the current dry period at the moment, it's a huge opportunity to showcase the resilience of those places that are applying regenerative and holistic principles that are, that are actually not you know, completely deserts because the, the media are just going to find the ones that are deserts because that's what they want. I heard the other day someone said they rang up and asked if they had any green grass and they went, yeah, we've got some. They said, oh, we don't want to talk to you. Oh, they never showed that. No, yeah. they won't show that. They wanted to show, you know, get mm. going. Yeah. But, so that's, but that's the opportunity at the moment is that there are practitioners out there doing a fantastic job applying the principles and we, we, we can show it right now. Well, I think the challenge is for those people that come out of university with a qualification going to agriculture in an agronomy situation, the machine's gone. Yeah. And the next minute just you put more on <coughs> before you know you do it more. Yeah. We've, we've, moved, we've moved a little way though, have we? because yeah I think we have. Yeah, good. And and Zach I, I'm pleased to hear what you were saying. One of the, the uh, themes I guess in the night was humus, uh, soil yeah. carbon. Yeah. And it's only a matter of what, three or four years ago, we had a couple of professors at UNE 
that would tell any one of you that wanted to ask point blank that you cannot increase the carbon in your soil. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. one of those people, one of those people <laughs> was apparently one of the world authorities on soil carbon. So, how did, how did we get to that point? A soil professor in the Melbourne University said, "Can't I'm not phosphorus." Yeah. The, the thing is, that they're, they're saying that you can't do it in the conventional systems that they teach. That's all. That's I can, what. That's the framework. Yeah, so they're saying you can't do it because we're teaching high inputs. Yeah. All the carbon gets burnt off, even if you know two or whatever. Like you know, you're adding fertilizer. Right, that's, that's, you know, like, that's the way they. That's the way they operate, and, and that's what. The, that's the context of them, which they're teaching. So it's not their fault, but they're just not. Offering yeah. another way of looking at and, and if, and if uh, people that are in that other side of things get involved in trials, and the, the data goes in a particular direction, what do they call it, Richard? Out, outliers. Outliers. <laughs> they're, rejected, they're rejected out of the data. <laughs> yeah. yeah. so, yeah. It's a it's a problem. But look, I, uh, it's not all about the news, and you know this is part of the good news. What's happened tonight? Um, there's there's a lot of good things happening. Um, I've got a question for Glenn. Yep. It's, it's an open-ended question. Where do we go from here? Like, what we had politicians. I, when we started the regenerative ag group with Sarah, we discussed who we should advertise to, and my opinion was a waste of time going to farmers. It was the little land landholders that were going to make the difference. Um, we keep bashing our head against the wall, trying to convince people that don't want to be convinced. Um, politicians are very similar. I just, mm. My question is, where do we go from now? Who do we approach? Do you see a bigger picture? Um, do we just continue to do the same old, same old? Do we grow? How do we do it? Yeah, well, I think, um, you know, I, I mentioned it earlier, I was at a meeting the other night and we sort of looked at the leaders, the leaders versus the population sort of mass making change. And I, I think there's a few people in the grants at the moment that the human health side of things is really generating some change um, in the community, demanding healthy food. And earlier this year, Katrina and I went to the Mind Health Forum, <coughs> International Mind Health Forum in Sydney, all about the human microbiome and health, and it, and it just blew me away, like the information that's coming out. But, um, and I was gonna mention it in my talk earlier, but one of the things they talked about was the inter, interactome, which is the combination of the microbial genes co combining with the 20,000 human genomes. So there's 10 million unique genes going on in our 1.8 kilogram microbiome. And so I did the figures here, which you don't need to know, but it's something like there's 10 billion gene sequences going on in a hectare creating the healthy food. But all of this information is just sort of starting to come out really fast. The science is massive on it. Um, yeah, so we, we just, we, yeah, we need to build the momentum to sort of get that human health message, but also get masses. And, and I, I really think we just need to rally crowds. And, you know, I was part of the um, Time to Choose rally in Sydney in March. You know, we took 26 horses down and, and 11,000 people walked and were motivated that it's time to choose to get rid of coal mining costs and gas, but, but the human health stuff comes up, the, the land management comes up, but, but it was interesting being at that forum too, to get back to your question, was, was every one of the speakers, everyone in the audience was learning that what we need is a really, really healthy standard diet, meat and veg if you like, and that, that was the message, you know, we just need meat for our microbiome, we avoid all these diseases. So you need meat, but there was only one farmer of, of any scale in the room. And, 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 you know, and I got questioned by my boss, what are you doing now? I said, well, we're in the health business. Yeah. But I, I, I sort of paid for, you know, for the cause myself. But it, you know, it's, it was really interesting, but they, they weren't quite making that connection, but it's up to us now to make that connection between this massive health movement. And so as a result, um, Stelk are gonna actually host a doctor, one of the doctors is coming up and he's gonna be talking about holistic health. So the bridge is formed. Um, and yeah, so just building numbers, yeah. but I don't, I don't think it matters in what form we do it, with the health community, with rallies, but we just need to generate change. And the other thing we've got on our, on our side, and 
I think this is going to happen really quickly, and it gets back to the former question: is 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 this brick wall is going to be torn down very shortly by Mother Nature? Yes, absolutely. And, and and we've got to be there, as Verity from Farmers for Climate Action says, with the alternative narrative, which we've got. We've got it here tonight, but all of a sudden we're going to go from this back room to people clamouring for answers, for clamouring for, and and back to one of the points you made earlier about this. Um, infrastructure funding for soil, what well, we've got to be really careful that then the guys that have been holding things back don't take over that policy. <laughs> because that's exactly what happened on the carbon farming and the climate change thing when Tony Windsor brought it in, is, is the department got it and just totally lost the real natural side of it. So, yeah, anyway, long answer to it. Jason, I think, I think things are changing, though. Like, there is, there is, we've, we've learned the momentum point to a point that we we are getting somewhere you know do we do we stimulate the process at the moment or you know do we just let it fly well, I'm not sure um, yeah well I think I think the Guardian rang last week and they're, they're looking for a positive yeah. alternative story in this drought yeah. this is probably it yeah, you know? yeah. Um, yeah. 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 it's yeah. timing isn't it really yeah. the timing is out for here feels very much like the challenge, the challenge now is like you said about the yeah. is that by Okay, speaking of timing, okay, no, so, Sorry. No, uh, no. Well, I'm just saying, look, we can carry this. We, we've only got this room for a certain time. Yeah. Okay. So let's go down to the bar. Great <laughs> 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 idea. Okay, all right. <laughs> let's open it up. <laughs> um, just on everyone's way out. What was your point? <laughs> 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 sorry, sorry, what was that, what was that, what was that? <laughs> 